Let's get ready to rumble! It's time for Gem Battles Part 2, or should I say Part Blue? Today we're pitting the biggest blue meanies against each other in a little mini tournament to find out which one is the truest and bluest. We'll mainly focus on their physical properties since those would likely be key factors in a bare knuckle brawl between two rocks, and we like to keep things as realistic as possible on this channel. That bell means it's time for round one. First, we have a truly beautiful showdown. In the blue corner, it's Tanzanite. And in the blue and also a few other colors corner, Sapphire. Sapphire has been used in jewelry for a few thousand years, where Tanzanite is a far newer entrant into the scene. It made its pro debut in 1968 when Tiffany & Co. unveiled it to the world for the first time. Since then, it's become wildly popular, despite only coming from one source. It became so popular that it was added as an alternate December birthstone in 2002. But can Tanzanite live up to its own hype, or will Sapphire's experience advantage give it the edge? Let's look at the stats. We'll start with Fracture. Fracture describes the way a gemstone tends to break under impact, stress, or temperature change. In this category, Tanzanite and Sapphire are pretty much the same. Both tend to have uneven conchoidal fracture. Imagine how broken glass has those curves like ripples in a pond. That's a conchoidal fracture. Another way a gemstone can break is along a plane of weakly bonded atoms. Since crystals have a, well, a crystalline structure, there are strong spots, but also weak ones. This plane of weakness is called a cleavage plane, and a gemstone can have multiple at once. Thankfully for tanzanite, it only has one plane of perfect cleavage. But what about its opponent, sapphire? That's where the bad news starts. Sapphire has no cleavage planes. Its atomic structure is such that it won't split like a tanzanite might. I keep using phrases like might break and tendency to break, but there's a measure for that. In the gemstone world, and sometimes in the fight world, we call that toughness. Toughness describes the material's resistance to breakage or chipping. More bad news for tanzanite. Its toughness is rated as poor to fair. Sapphire, on the other hand, is tough as nails. It has excellent toughness, meaning it's far less likely than tanzanite to break under the same force. As if it couldn't get any worse for tanzanite, sapphire comes in at an intimidating nine on the Mohs scale of hardness. Tanzanite, only six and a half. That explains why sapphire is used as an industrial abrasive, and tanzanite is used as, well, jewelry. But what's this? It looks like tanzanite has something up its sleeve. Extreme heat, of course. Almost all tanzanite takes a 600 degrees Celsius heat treatment to get it from its more common grayish to orangey brown color to the now famous violet blue. Surely sapphire can't repel firepower of that magnitude. Well, actually it can. Sapphire is also sometimes subjected to heat treatment to enhance its natural blue color. Only it cooks at 1000 to 1800 degrees Celsius. That's around 3200 degrees Fahrenheit and hot enough to melt steel it can comfortably take this heat for days or even weeks. Sorry, Tanzanite, you're outgunned. You lose. It's time to determine which stone we'll take on Sapphire in our final. Will it be turquoise or lapis lazuli? Let's find out. Both lapis and turquoise have been in the game as long as any other gemstone. They both feature heavily in Egyptian jewelry. The turquoise bracelet of an Egyptian queen was dated back to 5500 BC, and Lapis adorns the burial mask of King Tut himself. Lapis is also mentioned in the Epic of Gilgamesh, the world's oldest piece of great literature. How's that for a shout out? But enough hype, let's get messy. Turns out the commonalities between these two stones goes beyond their history. They are also very similar on the stat sheet. We'll start again with Fracture. They both tend to break granularly, while turquoise is a bit more conchoidal and lapis more uneven and rough looking. If either one breaks, it won't look too pretty. I'll tell you how they won't break though. They won't break along a plane of weaker atomic bonds. Neither of them have cleavage planes. They've even got comparable hardness levels. Turquoise tends to fall around five or six, while lapis sits at about five and a half to six, both a comparable hardness to glass. They may very well scratch each other, but will they break? This matchup could be decided in the toughness category. Lapis has poor toughness, while turquoise is fair to good. But if a good clean piece of lapis squared off against a heavily included internally fractured piece of turquoise, maybe it'd stand a chance. But as they say in the fight biz, you can't train your chin. Nice try, Lapis, but maybe stick to painting. 
All right, it comes down to this. Both these stones have shown their worth, but now it's time to see which of these blue brawlers is top dog. Ugh, I'm sorry, Turquoise. I love you, but I can't even watch this fight. With a leg left hook, and he goes down. He goes down. He should be able to get up from this. His legs may be shut. They are. I know you have thousands of years of experience. You reinvented the game. Before you came along, we were using bones and feathers for jewelry. But this isn't a jewelry battle, and Sapphire is in its prime. Just look at it. It's tougher, it's a nine on the most scale, and no cleavage planes. It even comes in more colors. Is there any gemstone that can beat the Corundum King? Why not Ruby? It's also Corundum, just like Sapphire. The only difference is Ruby has trace amounts of chromium, giving it that signature red color. In fact, they're so similar that the line between what's a ruby and what's a pink sapphire is pretty subjective. And since they're both corundum, they have virtually the same hardness, toughness, fracture, and no cleavage planes. There's no telling how a battle between ruby and sapphire would play out. It could end like this. Or like this. It's too close for me to call. Which gemstone would you put your money on? Red Baron or Blue Bomber? Let me know down in the comments and tell us what gem battles you'd like to see next. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell so you don't miss out on any of our future videos. Thanks for watching.